Hey there, and welcome to the CSS exercise portion of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from the ground up class. Uh, my name is Lindsay Simon, and I'm a UX web developer. So, this portion of the class is going to give you a chance to try to write some of your own CSS and suffer through the pain. But uh, let's start by looking at what it is you're going to be doing. Um, in our demo application, we have this navigation bar, something that is probably pretty familiar to you from most websites. This is something, uh, sort of a common pattern that you'll see. And our goal is to make this look good simply with CSS, look good and work well. No JavaScript, so that's pretty high, high goal here. Um, for starters, we're going to use the markup that we did in the HTML section for this chunk. And it's represented here. If you open the file CSS Exercise Unfinished, you can see here this is the markup that you did earlier that we've put in there. And we've given you a sort of a set of task lists. If you open the actual unfinished file in a browser, this is what it looks like. So we've got a long way to go. And the goal here is not necessarily that you get all of this right. It's actually quite challenging to get to here. We're going to do a walkthrough of how you get to here following this, following you taking a crack at it. But for starters, we put some reference in this file for you to, to get started with. And just try to do the first four things here if you can. And there's multiple ways to do these. But experiment with both of them. For instance, we've said, you know, make all of the list items render horizontally, and then make the second list items render vertically. So, you know, hide the second list. And we have some su suggestions on how to write your selectors here. So take about, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and see how close you can get to this. And try, my advice around the horizontal is, try both using inline display and float and see what the difference is there. So I'm gonna, we're gonna pause the video now and let you go away, start writing code, and then we'll come back and show you how it's all done. Pause. You're writing code, aren't you? Okay. So, let's look at the finished version of this file. So, now we have the file CSS Exercise step-by-step -step open. And I'm going to open that here in my browser. So, there we have it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment lines, one at a, you know, chunks of selectors one at a time as we make our way through the final the solution here to this. So, for starters, one thing we did, you know, and you can kind of go backwards here. One thing we wanted to do with this nav bar is to be able to make it so that you could include this nav bar anywhere in the content of the page. It didn't have to be the first thing, but we do want it to appear at the top and pinned to the top left corner. So we did that by making it position absolute. And you can see by making it position absolute, we can give it a background and we know we're up at the top left. And that's a good start. Position Absolute also has an added benefit of being able to what's called contain our floats. Later on, we're going to make some of the list items float, and Position Absolute will contain floats. So that's another handy thing to know about it. So we're going to remove the list style. By default, these list items have bullets next to them, and nested inside, you get a disk. So if we say any UL inside of an element with the IDWD navbar is now list style none, that removes all of the list style bullets. We've also taken away any margin, and we've added in just a little bit of padding. So now we're going to tackle all list items. And notice that this is actually getting at both of the lists. This, this element has two nested lists, one nested inside of the contact. So we're affecting both of those with these selectors. So we've done float left. And already, for starters, we've gotten a horizontal-looking layout here. We can see home, product, services about horizontal. They've got a little bit of right margin, so they're right net, not right up next to one another. Now we're going to target the anchors inside of the list items. And we're going to make them display block. And the reason for that is multifold. But 
we're going to give them background color and a border. And ta-da. So and they've also got padding. So now they take up a little bit more room, right? So we're making them blocks for the reason that when we hover them, we want the, the click area to be bigger than just the text. So now we've used a hover selector. And you can see the full size of these anchors, right? And it's got padding, so now the click target's pretty big. We can click in the padding, since these are block displays, and actually go to the href of these anchors. So we've made big clickable navigation. So this is a nice usability feature of making anchors display block. Um, and there's our hover selector. So also called a pseudo selector. So now we're going to target a UL inside of an LI. There's only one UL inside of an LI, and that's the UL for the second list. In other words, this is an indented uh, list inside of another list. So we're going to make it display none. We're going to position it absolutely to take it out of the flow, and we're going to take away all its padding. And when we refresh, wow, cool. This is our, this is our bar. The UL is still there, but now that it's out of the flow, it's not taking up space. And so our nav bar looks the right size. So we're going to do something here that will not work in much older browsers, specifically IE6 here. There are ways around this, but we're going to put a hover pseudo selector on any list item, that, and any list item that contains a UL where the LI is being hovered will be display block. This is to counteract the display none from the line above. And what that does is that when we hover on a list item, that contains an unordered list, that unordered list will now be display block. And so there we have it. We've got an, this list showing up on the page. But notice it's horizontal, and we need to counteract that. So we're going to counteract that by saying any list item that is a child of another list item is float none. So when we do that, we're going to get back the default vertical display of list items. And we're going to add in a border bottom also, so you can see a little separation here. Now, it's important here, when you look at the selector, we didn't do li, ul, li. That would work, but that's adding one extra bit of selector that we don't need. It's always true that this li is contained by a ul. And this is actually a nice selector, because let's say we decided to change our container to an ol. We changed our mind. We would have to change it up here on line 16 and other places where we've said ul to be ol, but not here. So this is a better selector. It uses less points. But anyhow, our last bit of CSS to get to the final product is here. We just take away the border, the default border there, add in a little more bordering. So the border on top is not set. And notice now we've got this nice looking navigation bar that matches our sort of spec for this. So not the easiest um, CSS construction to do, but I think seeing it now, you can tell it's definitely doable, and um, hopefully you've come away with some tools to prepare you for writing your next CSS for your next project. Uh, thank you.